Uh, greetings, dear church. It's so nice to see everyone here, and what a wonderful time it is, a time when we're remembering uh, in this country we're all going to be gathering together and thanking our Lord for all that he has provided just a few days from today. And with all this going on, this heart, uh, heart of thanksgiving it ca caused me to think about the, the law of sowing and reaping. Because remember what happened about five, six months ago and everything got disrupted back in March. You know, the, there was so much uncertainty and we know that somebody, even though there was so, no, no, people did not know how things would end, the farmers still went out and sowed their seeds. We had food all, all summer, even though some people probably got scared and didn't do it, but the farmers, they sowed, and today we can still eat. We can go to the grocery store and eat because somebody sowed at the right time, and t now we're reaping the harvest. And, of, of course, most of the things of, of the field are gathered, and that's why we can... If, if you haven't gathered enough food, the only thing you can do is trust in the Lord because that's what the whole celebration of Thanksgiving is because the first uh, pilgrims, they didn't have enough, and all they could do is trust in the Lord. And today I would like to share a principle that comes from this same idea of sowing and reaping, and it is found in Galatians, the letter of Galatians. Apostle Paul writes in the very end of this letter, he talks about the principle of sowing and reaping. So we're going to read from Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 10. The title of my message today is The Blessing of Sowing and Reaping. Now as we read this section, somebody might think of it as maybe a negative law, that it's something that where they're scared because if you do the, right, the wrong thing, God will automatically be mad at you and and curse you for whatever you did wrong. But let's read it in a positive light and see how this can be the most, ble the most uh, important law of, uh, in nature because as we read in, in the beginning, Mark read to us from Genesis 1, that's where the, the Lord, he determined that this is the way nature will, circum uh, will, uh, will work, that there will always be sowing and there will always be reaping. Uh, as Genesis 8, 2 says, while... While the earth remains, and we saw this picture of the earth, while the earth remains, it says there will be seed time and there will be harvest. There will be cold and hot. There will be winter and summer, day and night. So as long as the earth remains, this law will be in effect. So let's read about this law of sowing and reaping. Galatians 6, 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we, will, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially those of the, uh, who are of the household of faith. So what a wonderful passage this is. And here we see Apostle Paul talks a lot about the law, the, the law of the spiritual law, laws of the Ten Commandments and so forth, and how the Galatians, they did not want to follow the spiritual law, and they went back to the, the old ways. And here Apostle Paul gives us a, a spiritual law and ties it in with a natural law, and he ties it into the spiritual. And I would like to share five points about these verses that we read that will help us understand that this law is actually a blessing. Oftentimes when we hear, do not be deceived, God is not mocked, we think of it as a negative thing, but let's look at it as a positive way. I think Apostle Paul is showing the heart of God, that he is a good God and he wants the good for us because this is such a blessing that you can just put a seed in the ground and all you have to do is give it the right environment and it will grow. God will take care of the rest. So, the first thing I would like to share with you is that you cannot lie to God. That's, that we find in the first part of verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. So the word, the Greek word is actually used as like, do not lift up your nose at God. The word to mock God is to sneer at God because some people like to do things their own way and they say, I can get, get by without God's help. 
You can do things your own way, but God will let you, let you go your own way, but the end will be destruction and, and, and hell in eternity because that's what we see. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap corruption, and that's what corruption is, eternity without God. So here we see the law of sowing and reaping is unavoidable. It's something that God uh, determined from, from the very first days of creation. So we have to remember that all of our actions, they have either a positive or a negative consequence, sowing and reaping. We all, everything we do, we have to be very careful with our thoughts and, and think about our actions because they will always sow, we sow something and it will grow into be either a positive thing, a blessing to us, or a curse to us. And not only to us, but to those around us. So all of our decisions, whether great or small, they will eventually uh, sprout. Like um, an example of this in nature is when I used to live in, out in California. You know, California is a really dry place, and especially in the, the hills of California, they dry out really, really, they turn into almost a desert, and there's no life for most of the summer. It's absolutely, it's not nothing pretty to see. It's just ugly, uh, dry grass all over the hills. But believe it or not, but in California, it actually rains for, there's a few months out of the year that it rains, and sometimes it rains a lot. So there's always uh, seeds in the, in the desert. So I don't know if anybody has ever got to see this blessing of when rain, there's so much rain that the seeds get life and they begin to sprout, and in the desert, these beautiful flowers bloom. It's the most wonderful, most bl uh, bl biggest blessing to see that the desert turns to life but it's a very, very short-lived, maybe, maybe sometime between April and May. And as soon as the sun comes out, they, they dry out and they, they fall back into the ground and wait for the next rain. So those seeds might be there for years. It might be 10 years that there might be no big rain. Once the rain comes, the seeds come up and it's the most beautiful sight that you could ever see because California becomes tra transfigured into this wonderful Oasis uh, becomes like the most beautiful place you could ever imagine. But that's only a short time. And that's, we can see that in our spiritual, we can tie that into our spiritual life because sometimes we put a seed and uh, we, we do some kind of action and we think that nothing happened. Or maybe it was either good or bad, but we put the seed and it might be years later that that uh, seed begins to sprout and grow and it bears fruit. So we have to remember that not everything we do takes place right away. It takes lots of time. And then also in this verse, we see that we are very uh, capable of being deceived. So de deceiving ourselves is something that comes natural to us. Verse 7 says, do not be deceived. And Apostle Paul wouldn't say this unless it was a, a real problem that we as humans have. Because uh, oftentimes we get deceived because we did something one time and there wasn't a big consequence, so we keep doing it again and again. But here in this section, Apostle Paul is saying that every time you do it, it, either a good thing or a bad thing, it will come eventually. It will sprout in the future. Somebody once said that whatever you do in your 20s, like somebody maybe, let's go even earlier, in your teens will affect you in your 20s. Whatever you sow in your 20s will eventually catch up with you in your 30s. So if you want, like right now I'm in my 30s, whatever things I'm doing will most likely catch up to me in my 40s. So if I'm eating a very unhealthy way now, it might not affect me for 10 years, but in my 40s it will catch up to me. If I'm, um, not, if I'm ignoring the reading of scripture now, I might still have a base of what I learned in my early years, but in the future, it will affect me because I, I spend a whole decade maybe of ignoring the scriptures. It will affect me that it, it always goes about 10 years later. So if you're doing something in your 50s, you might think you're healthy, and then in your 60s it might really affect you because you weren't taking good care of your health. So whatever we sow now, it might be many years later that it will only take root and grow. So everything we reap eventually will... Uh, was sown either by man, another man, or by God. And if we look at our country now, we see that somebody sowed back in hundreds of years ago when the first pilgrims came, they sowed 
the, the good seeds of wanting this country to be based on a, uh, the principles of God's word, and they did everything to form the Constitution of the United States. And we didn't have anything to do with that. All we were doing, we were entering into that labor that somebody else did. That's what Jesus says in John 4, 38. He says, I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into this labor. So we know that somebody else began this great country and did all this for us, and we are reaping that. But also we have to remember that in the 1960s, other seeds began to be planted. Uh, remember, in the 60s is when the God began to be excommunicated, uh, kicked out of the schools and not allowed to, there, there wasn't prayer allowed in schools anymore. And then little by little, God was drawn out of the schools and then we know the 70s, the abortion was uh, legalized, and so many things happened in such a short time, and now we are reaping those fruits. And we see how it, ch it completely uh, trans uh, changed uh, our society in which we live today. So the first thing we looked at is that you, you cannot lie to God. The second thing is you reap whatever has been sown. You reap what has been sown. You do not reap more, uh, you cannot reap the things that were not planted. So uh, in the last maybe five, six years, I really got into more of a gardening. And every time spring comes along, we usually go to, this, uh, to the store and buy so many seeds because we think we're going to plant so much things. So we buy way more seeds than we need. And then we re realize we only have this certain space we can plant. So a lot of the seeds we buy just end up sitting in our bags there, wherever we have them, and they're maybe waiting for next time. Those bags that are never planted in the ground will never grow, but the things that we do plant, those will grow uh, if we give it the right environment, of course. So no one can sow a carrot and reap, uh, expect to reap a potato. We, whatever you put in the ground is what ex we expect to come out. When we think about it in the natural sense, it makes sense that whatever you put, you expect to get. But sometimes in the spiritual sense, we, we sow bad thoughts and then we think that something good will come out of it. So can someone sow sin but expect to reap holiness? No, we know that. Can somebody sow lies for many, many years and then expect to reap uh, truth? Or can somebody sow quarrels and arguments and fights and then expect to have peace? No, that doesn't happen. But for some reason, we think that happens in our lives because we keep on doing the same mistakes over and over. So we choose what we want to sow. I think as a gardener, you would never plant some kind of uh, vegetables that you absolutely hate because why would you grow something that you don't like? You, you choose the things that you like the most and you plant those things. So we have to remember that all the actions begin from one seed. When we plant something, it will grow up. It might be a tiny thing that we do, but it will eventually grow. And it will show uh, evidence once the fruit comes up. What kind of uh, seed was it? A good seed or a bad seed? We also have to remember that the growth of the seed, once it's planted, cannot be stopped. Once you plant something in the ground, it will nature will take over and it will grow. Just like if we look in our spiritual lives, once we do some kind of action and plan something, it will eventually grow. We can't take that back, but the only thing we can do is plant good seeds and tear the bad ones out. So once that bad seed comes up, we can spend time and pull it out of the ground and, and hope to seed good things over so that the bad ones will not come up. So we reap only what we plant. And the second thing is that we reap more than what we sow. We reap more than what we sow. Jesus said you reap it 30, 60, and 100 times, it says in the scriptures. Every time you plant one thing, there's, it's not just one. If you plant one potato, not one, one potato doesn't grow back. It's going to be a lot more. You can plant a few potatoes and you can get a, a whole bucket if you, if you give it the right environment. So if there was no increase, nobody would waste their time to plant the seeds. You would, if you have one potato and you think, I can either eat it now or sow it, and four months later I would eat it. And if you only get one potato, then there's no benefit. 
but the, 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 the blessing of the, this law that God instituted is that you reap more, you, you, sow, uh, you reap more than what you sow. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 says, he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly, but he who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. And the same thing takes place in the spiritual world. So if we sow a little bit of good seed, we will reap not just a little bit, we'll reap a whole harvest of, uh, of God's blessing. And if we sow a little bit of evil, maybe in our youth we think, oh, it's just a little thing here and there, it will catch up and it will grow into a whole lifetime of evil. And an example of this is maybe something, some, sometimes people might say, oh, well, cheating on taxes is not something that evil, it's not that big, well, I'll just do it with this one time. So somebody might cheat on their taxes and say, it's just this one time, but that, that seed will be planted. And then a few years later, you might say, well, that wasn't really that bad. And then you start doing more and more, and that, that seed that was planted begins to grow, and that little bit of evil begins to become multiplied. So that's why it's always best to do the right thing and plant the right seeds. I would like to look at the life of David for just a few minutes about how his life was changed in that moment when he met uh, David met Bathsheba there, and he saw her, and he had a choice he could make. He could go do what he did, or he could stop and, and see the consequences of what would happen. And we know what happened. He did what he did. He didn't look at the fact that she was another woman's, another man's wife. So remember what happened, and then uh, sometime later, Nathan comes and he convicts this man who is a great, a great king, and Nathan was not afraid, but he came and said that you did this evil thing. So we see that there, Nathan, he gives an accusation of what happened, and then he says how it affected the life of David. So he, he says, Nathan says to David, you killed the, uh, Uriah with the sword, and the judgment to you will be that the sword will never depart from your house. Can you imagine how many people died in David's uh, family or his whole household because of this one sin that he did? And then he, uh, Nathan says, you took his wife, and then the judgment for David was that I will take your wife, and before your, uh, your eyes and the eyes of all the neighbors shall see what you did, and everyone will see in the sun. You did this secretly, and everybody will see, all of Israel will see what you did. So David, if, if an angel came down to David and showed him everything that would happen to him if he did this one thing, I'm sure that David would have never fallen into this sin. But at that moment, he wasn't thinking that this action that he will do, that the seed that he plants will have a negative consequence. He thought this is just a one-time thing that will not affect him. But we know how tragically it affected the life of David. So the third thing we will look at here is that do, do, you, uh, do you sow to the flesh or to the spirit? So look, let's look at verse 8. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Where, what do we sow? Do we sow to the flesh or to the spirit? So that which is sown is made known by its fruit once it comes up. So when you're holding a handful of seeds, you do not know if it's a good seed or bad seed. You have to plant it, and then eventually it will grow up, and it will show what kind of seed it was. So what is sown is not seen until the fruit emerges, whether it, we have sown to the spirit or to the flesh. Now, have you ever planted seeds like uh, cucumbers and maybe melons or squashes? The seeds, they look very similar, and when they gr grow, they look almost identical. You can barely tell them apart. And the only way you can really tell what it is is once the fruit begins to form. Then you can know for sure this is a cucumber or is this a melon or what other kind of vegetable you planted. Sometimes you might plant a seed that is actually dead and it does not grow. That happens sometimes. It's just a dead seed that you planted and there's no life in it, so it doesn't grow. But you can only tell that once uh, we put it in the ground. 
So Romans chapter 8 talks about this in a great way. It shows us how, there's, how important our mindset is in re- relationship to uh, sowing to the flesh or to the spirit. Let's look at Romans 8, 5, and 6. These few verses are very important to this discussion. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who's, who li- uh, those whose lives uh, live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Sometimes we, we, we want to have life and peace, but we sow the things that are fleshly, and then we can never have that because if you sow according to the flesh, you will reap corruption, as the Word of God says. So whatever we think and talk about the most is often a, a good indication of the, thing, the kind of fruit that we have in our life. So how can we learn to sow according to the Spirit, not to the flesh? And we see here is that we have to be a good example in all things. Uh, Titus gives us a good pattern to follow. He says, Titus 2.7 says, In all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works. Not just uh, one time here and there, but always constantly living in a way that proves that you, the seed that you have is a good seed and it grows into eternal life. To follow the example of Jesus Christ, to live according to his character, to show uh, the light, light of Jesus through our own life. So we have to learn that all things, all that is in our power, we do everything, but we have to leave the results in God's hands. So whenever we plant the seed, we can't do anything to make the seed grow other than water, but God makes the seed grow. So look at what Paul says in Corinthians. First Corinthians 15.10, he talks about, he gives all the glory to God in this verse, and he says, By the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace towards me was not in vain, But I labored more aboundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. And this is the attitude we should always have when we do anything for the Lord. It's not I, but the grace of God. Not I, but Jesus who lives in me. And Apostle Paul doesn't take credit for the things he did in his own life. So the third thing we looked at is that to see whether we sow to the spirit or the flesh. And the fourth point is you will reap at the correct time if you do not give up. Verse 9, you will reap if you do not give up. And the time might not be what we expect. It might be years or decades later that the seed will come up and the fruit will grow. Verse 9 says, Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. And I think this verse 9 is an indication that Apostle Paul means this, this whole discussion of, that we're reading as a positive thing, not a negative thing, that when you're doing good things, do not be disheartened. Do not grow weary, as it says here, because maybe you didn't, somebody didn't notice you. Maybe you did something good and nobody noticed, nobody cared about what you did and I think the point of verse 9 is that God always cares and God always remembers when you do something good, it doesn't matter if, if nobody else saw, God will give, a, give evidence that this was a good seed planted and it will grow into life eternal. God will always reward those who live according to the spirit, not the flesh. So we think if there is no fruit right away that there will be no consequences. That's, I think, uh, the problem we as humans have, and that's why Apostle Paul says, do not be deceived, because we often do things one time, another time, and over and over, and there might not seem to be any consequences, but we know that according to this law, there will always be consequences. That is why many Christians sow to the flesh on a weekly basis, maybe Monday through Saturday, they, they just do their own regular thing, and then come Sunday, they want to reap according to the Spirit, but that's not how life works. We have to always be sowing to the Spirit. And then we can come on Sunday and and reap the blessings, but not live a double life. 
So we hope that there won't be any bad consequences because we repented. And of course, if we are, as Christians, we did something wrong and we repent, we know that God will cleanse us and he will take the, the guilt away and the, there will be no, uh, no um, punishment for the sin itself, but does not, does not mean that there won't be consequences. Consequences come sometimes many years later, but they do come because this law, like it says, God is not mocked. Whatever is sown will always show evidence, whether it's good or bad. And we know that harvest does not come right away. After the seed is sown, it takes, uh, some things take a very long time to sprout. Sometimes you plant something and a few days later it's already growing. But in our life, we have to remember that when we do good, let's remember that God in the right due season, he will give us a reward. And we know that a, a city is never built in one day. And we know that uh, wisdom does not come in one night. Sometimes we, we, we want to go really deep in the scriptures and hope that just by spending a few days, a few hours in the scriptures, that they will give us wisdom, enough wisdom for the rest of our life. That's not how this works. We know that it's constantly going deep into the scriptures that will eventually give us the wisdom that we all want as we grow older. We see our grandparents. We think, how can our grandfather or even our grandmother, how can they know so much about the Bible? How can they, they're so spiritual because they spend their whole life sowing Sowing good seeds, not to the flesh, but to the spirit. For a good harvest, we need a lot of energy. And we know that when we look at somebody that's really involved in gardening or farming, there's a lot of energy that goes in. And somebody that just does a small garden here and there might not know the, the benefit, I mean, the, the really hard work that goes in to preparing all that needs to be done. But it's a lot of hard work, and we oftentimes want to have the blessing of uh, reaping a harvest without doing the hard work of sowing and preparing the seed. And oftentimes we do not wait on the Lord, and we make lots of mistakes because we want to rush things. We want things to happen fast, and we know that we live in a culture where everything is expected to happen instantly, we know that when you're planting seeds, you, you need to work the ground, you need to pull all the weeds out, you need to plow, you need to fertilize, you need to water, you need to tie things up, you need to cut things down that are in the way. And also a very important thing is not forget to take the harvest because if you leave the harvest uh, on, the, on, the, on the plant too long, it will begin to rot. In a few, maybe weeks too late, it might be completely waste ruined if we do not collect the harvest. So we know that weeds grow on their own. Nobody ever has to plant weeds. Somehow they always either fly into our, our gardens or our property and they grow. Either maybe sometimes birds spread it, animals spread it, wind spreads it, but there's always weeds that grow where we do not want them to grow. And I think this is an example of the works of the flesh because nobody ever needs to be taught how to do bad things. Nobody needs to be taught to lie and deceive people. It, is always, it comes natural. It is something that we, we oftentimes deceive ourselves, but those things, uh, the things that grow up like weeds are examples of the deeds of the flesh, and we need to root it up, pull it out with the, with the root, and to uh, plant good seeds instead of that. And the last point before we pray is the final 10th verse, number five is, while you have time, do what is right. Do what is right because there will not always be a time. I think uh, this year especially has showed us that time, times can change very fast. And maybe last year as we were celebrating Thanksgiving, nobody thought that this year could have been the way we, we live this year, we all thought everything would go like it always did, but God can change things in a mom, um, just a very short moment. But we need, while we have the time to do good, we need to do it. And that's what verse 10 says. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, not just some, but all, especially to those who are of the household of, uh, of faith. 
So we cannot change the things that we have been, have been sown in the past, but what we can change is we can start sowing good seeds today. Like I said, if there are bad seeds, we can uproot it. We can take it out and put good seeds in the, in the, in the place of those bad seeds. So sometimes it happens that yesterday's mistakes uh, keep us from sowing good seeds today and tomorrow because we think we did so much bad in the past that there's no point. But this scripture tells us that there's always point. As long as there's an opportunity, which is as long as you're alive and breathing and reading the scripture, there's still a chance for you to do good and plant good seeds. Do not, do not say, I did enough already bad things in my life. There's no way I can change. No, you can always grow and you can always take out yesterday's bad bad seeds and plant good ones in its place. We have to acknowledge the mistakes that we make, that we have made, and learn not to repeat them again. And that means to repent before God and to understand that He has forgiven our sins. And through our mistakes, learn to be transformed into the image of Christ. So we need to devote ourselves to sowing good seeds and the seeds that will bring forth uh, fruit, fruit that will abide, like Jesus says, that the only way we can bear fruit is if we are abide on the, on the vine. That's the only way we can bear fruit. We can't bear fruit on our own. And by ac acknowledging our full dependence on Jesus Christ is the only way we can bear fruit in this, in this world. And then it says to do good, especially to those who are of the household of faith. And it's so nice that we have a community that we can serve each other. And there's so many different types of aspects we could serve the community. And not just our church, but those around us. And it's such a blessing that we can help each other. And in conclusion, I just wanted to say that, you know, this is a wonderful time of, of the year for us to, to an analyze our life and to see whether the things we did in the past year are good or bad, and we can evaluate what we can change, what we need to grow, where we need to be transformed. So somebody once said the, fi the following phrase about sowing and reaping. They said, if you sow a thought, it will, you will reap an action. If you sow an action, you will reap a habit. If you sow a habit, you will reap a character. And if you sow a character, you will reap a destiny. Because little by little, these seeds, they, they change us. And it's not something that happens overnight. It's constant. When we do the right thing over and over, it bears for good fruit. And it makes us into the character we are, the, the character that represents Jesus Christ. And if we do the wrong things wrong, um, many times, it, the bad begins to show and bad fruits begin to grow. So let us take this opportunity to ask the Lord to help us grow in these, uh, this principle, the principle of sowing and reaping, because it is def definitely a blessing that God, well, God says, whatever you sow, you will reap. And so right now we have an opportunity to pray. Let's praise the name of our Lord. Uh, amen.